Okay, Anna, we're live. Oh, amazing. Am I hosting now? Uh, yep. Oh, I'm the host now. Okay, we are live. This is so exciting. Um, hello, everybody who is very organized and has joined us on the dot of 630. If that's somebody, I am in awe of you. Um, I have noticed over the past couple of months that um, when we do these uh, kind of streamed events that people tend to gradually tune in. So we're not going to have a hard start, uh, but if you are watching us online um, and if you're watching in Zoom, we would love you to comment in the chat box and um, say hello, introduce yourself, maybe uh, let us know your name and where you are watching us from tonight. Um, uh, while we are, are waiting to start the, the party portion of this evening, um, I, I thought I'd give you guys a little context. Um, so my name is Anna and I am the very lucky director of the New York Youth Symphony's Musical Theatre Songwriting Program. And um, the New York Youth Symphony has been around since 1963. Um, so it is a very well established organization that is built around um, their orchestra, uh, but they also have other programs. They have a traditional composition program, they have chamber music, they have a jazz band. Um, and uh, just uh, last year, they started a musical theater songwriting program. And uh, I have been very fortunate to be working with uh, 12 of the most gifted um, young songwriters I have ever encountered. We uh, gather every Tuesday uh, at the Harlem School of the Arts um, and we uh, work on different songwriting pro projects. There were three major projects that we did this season. The first project was one where students were writing songs inspired by uh, photographs that told a story. The second project, we all um, nominated movies that we wanted to adapt into a musical as a class and we landed on Inside Out by Pixar and then uh, different students were assigned different moments from the film to turn into a musical theatre song and then we presented those numbers in sequence in a masterclass for David Yazbek who is the Tony nominated no, nom not nominated, winning, <laughs> Tony winning composer of the band's visit. Uh, and then uh, for our last uh, project, we worked with the costume designer, uh, Sarah Lau. And Sarah, when she is research researching for a show, creates what she refers to as inspiration boards, which are these visual images where she pulls together photographs of different people that they therefore inspire the costuming that she designs and uh, we wrote songs based on characters that were inspired from her inspiration board and tonight for you we will be presenting um, songs that were picked from all of those different projects and ultimately um, compiled into a greatest hits album uh, because when the pandemic struck uh, in March, we shifted to online like so, so many educational programs did. And we were to actually do a concert showcasing um, songs from that were generated in the program tonight. Uh, in fact, we would be backstage waiting to go on stage right at this moment at Joe's Pub downtown in New York City. Uh, however, that couldn't go ahead. And so uh, we shifted gears and instead of the students orchestrating their songs for a live band, they uh, created um, digital orchestrations using programs like 
GarageBand or Audi Audio Logic, um, and they made their arrangements at home. And then they pooled resources and they um, asked one another to sing um, on the recordings of their songs. Um, they did all the mixing themselves. Uh, we actually had a fun class a couple of Tuesdays ago where we all listened to drafts of one another's songs. And it was kind of incredible to see um, this very adept group of young people um, just throw themselves into the deep end of suddenly becoming producers and recording artists on top of being songwriters. Um, if you are just tuning in, we would love you to say hello in the chat box. Uh, you can uh, drop your name in and let us know where you are watching us from. Um, and we are going to um, kick off, I think. Um, so before we hear the first number from our album, I just wanted to add that uh, the New York Youth Symphony, uh, this incredible institution, like so many institutions, is especially in need of support right now. Um, it's a difficult time for the arts especially in New York City. And so if you are watching and you love what these students are doing and you want to see this program continue to thrive alongside our other programs, you can visit um, nyys.org and there is a link there that you can go to to donate. Um, so our first song of the evening is a number called Sit Still. It's written by Simon, who is waving his hand for you right now into his camera. And uh, uh, this is a, a song that actually is the only song on our album that wasn't um, part of one of the projects that we did as assignments during the year. Um, Sit Still was a song that Simon was asked to write specifically as an opener for our concert and then it, it subsequently became the opener of our album. Um, and the wonderful Grace Grammans was asked, Grace can you wave as well, was asked to perform the vocals for this number. Um, so without further ado, here is Simon's um, song, Sit still. <laughs> Here we go. There were two words I heard more than any when I was a child. Sit still. Every time that I walked out of place or my motions were wild. Sit still, though moving felt natural, my personal language. When I spoke it, no one understood. So it didn't take me very long to think that there was something wrong. So when they said sit still, I never could. So I tried to restrain myself, keep all my muscles immobile. Sit still, I sat on my hands, crossed my legs, kept my face in a smile. Sit still, but then in a moment of a weekend resolve, in an action no one would approve. and arm undulation I let my restraints disappear so every day as soon as I got the chance I'd open my ears and relax my stance I'd think with my body nothing planned in advance and I'd glide through my bedroom as if in a trance until one day my mother walked in and she laughed, and I stared, and she said, I found the answer. 
Seeing you move, I now understand Nothing's wrong, you're just a dancer You're a dancer Now nothing restrains me, I'm graceful and agile and In a language I speak fluently Cause now I can tell you with no hesitation I want the whole world to see I'm never gonna hide again My movement's kept in sight again Instead I'll always move to my own choreography Cause now I know I'm a dancer imagining thunderous applause um so um now we are going to have a little chat with chloe geller who will be the next person uh presenting a song from the album chloe welcome hello um so the song that i wrote um it's called my best friend and basically the song's about um the bond between a man and, and his dog and how there's um making the most of the time that they still have together. Um, so my song is sung by Jesse Han, who you'll hear a song from in a little bit. Thanks so much, Chloe. Um, and this was inspired by one of the photographs and you will see the photograph in one hot second once I play the video. My best friend, we brave adventures big and small, but there's no easy way of knowing just where we'll end up going. Something's waiting around the bend. My best friend, the years are skipping by us all. We'll spend each hour here together, make believe we have forever, at least we can pretend. We'll take a walk out by the lake, feel the breeze, take in the view, breathe in the misty air, and watch each passerby beneath the blue. Bury our troubles in the sand, you and me. We'll cruise along down 65, let the wind roll through our hair, play fetch out on the lawn and tumble through the grass without a care. Soak up the moments that could be. My best friend, know that when summer fades to fall, there's no easy way of knowing just where you'll end up going. I'll be here till the end. I'll be here till the end. It's waiting round the bend. That was so beautiful, Chloe. Can I ask you a question about your song? Yeah, absolutely. So something that was really challenging, I think, about this uh, particular project was that when you were given the photograph, um, you didn't just have to write the moment depicted in the photograph, but come up with a larger story that went around the, the, the image captured in a photograph. And I was wondering if you could share a little bit about the sort of backstory that you imagined for this guy and his dog. 
Yeah, so I sort of imagined um, that the guy would be sort of like blue blue collar sort of worker, you know, like just like always always working the day and having sort of a, a tough jo job and coming home to his, I imagined like a, a 12 or 13 year old golden retriever um, that he would be coming home to every day. Um, and it's just him and the, the dog at living together um, at his house. And like, that's that's sort of all he has and sort of just touching on like the bond that that this man has with his dog um, and how it's just a, such a special part of his life. Um, so yeah, before I, I wrote the song, I sort of took some time to think some of those things through and, um, and how that, because the dog's getting old, they only have so much time together. Um, so I wanted it to create a song that captured the, um, the love that he has for his dog. Beautiful. It's amazing how important people's pets are, especially right now while we're in shelter in place. I feel like this song, the relationship feels even more important now to me listening to it now than when I listened to it the first time. Um, so we're going to <laughs> we're going to listen to um, another song in one second. I just wanted to say that if you want to view a program of the songs tonight, um, John is going to drop a link into the chat box um, and you can take a look. Um, and he's also going to put into the chat box a link to where you can donate on the New York Youth Symphony website if you like. Um, so our sec, no, third song, our third song um, on the album is a song that is written um, by, it's a collaboration actually, between Isabella and Grace. Um, and uh, what's really fascinating, I think, about Isabella and Grace is that they are both glorious singer-songwriters, in addition to being these terrific composed lyricists. Um, and when they started working together in collaboration, this was just a match made in heaven. And it's kind of incredible to think that they were able to collaboratively come up with a song that was so successful within just the first few weeks of class. And I think it's a testament to the, the creative juices that were flowing between these two. Um, so um, Isabella, you're gonna set this one. Oh no, Grace, you're gonna set this one up for us, aren't you? Um, yes, I... Go ahead. All right, so this was for the first assignment that we did and we were fascinated by this picture of a bride crying um, sitting at a table and we wanted to write a song about that story. Um, so the story that we created behind it was that she had just found out that her fiance had cheated on her um, right before the wedding. And this is kind of, this is the song that captures her decision. Well, you'll find out what her decision is at the end, but this is what captures her thought process when she finds out this news. And who is the person performing on this track, Grace? I'm the person performing on this track. I, Bella and I wrote it and we actually, when we sat down and wrote it, we wrote it and I want to say about an hour together. Um, but I, I performed and produced the track. Okay, so here we go. walks, late night talks, swept me off my feet. A perfect storm, gold adorned, a future so upbeat. Your champagne taste and frilly gifts were all a part of the plan. And now I see you always were a second class man.
been hurt and nothing can compare to how I felt when you looked at me without a care. Fabulous work. Isabella, I have a question for you. Um, sure. I'm sure that um, a lot of people watching um, may be aware that typically when you have a songwriting team in musical theater, it, it often comprises of a composer and a lyricist, though so, um, Aaron's and Flaherty or Rogers and Hammerstein um, or Kander and Ebb. But in this case, you and Grace are both composer lyricists. So I'm very curious about how you passed out that collaboration. Um. Well, so as Grace said, we did this in a pretty short amount of time um, and we started just kind of looking through the pictures and we both decided on one that was inspiring to us. Um, and Grace just kind of started going on it at the piano and I don't know, it was just an instinct to start writing the lyrics. Um, and she gave me some ideas for the lyrics and I suggested some things for um, the compositional aspects. So it really was a collaborative effort, but um, that's just, I don't know, it's just kind of how it, how it happened. It was interesting. It's like the person, one person had a really strong impulse, a strong musical impulse, and then you guys sort of built on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it reminds me of playing improv games and the, and the whole yes and theory, if people here are familiar with improv. <laughs> um, <laughs> so our next song from our album is a song that's written by Ayala and uh, something that is very special about this group is that um, when it came time to work on the, the album, some students um, also volunteered to arrange for other students. And in this case, Sarah Stebbins um, created the marvelous arrangement for Ayala's song. Ayala, can you um, set us up for uh, your song, please? All right, so, um, hi, uh, my name is Ayala, and this song is called A Shattered Bottle of Vodka, and it's a song I wrote based on a picture of a woman with her dog. Um, and in this song, she's telling her dog about the heartbreak that she's suffered in her life. Um, I wrote the music and lyrics, and Sarah wrote the arrangement and is singing in the song, so yeah, enjoy. <laughs> You think your life is tough, sir? <laughs> well, honey, can't get proper. If you want to hear the story from the start, it involves an empty bottle of whiskey and an empty heart. Caroline, I 
said, my Barry, you have finally crossed the line. But with my wit and some persuasion, she'd be out of the equation. And my Barry would be mine and only mine. You think your life is tough, sir? Well, trust me, mine is rougher. You said you want to hear the story from the start. It involved the shattered bottle of vodka and a shattered heart. Bravo. Ayala, I would love to ask you a question which is you write the most tremendously dark, wicked characters or just characters that are somewhat left of center. And I'm just curious, what inspires you uh, to take that approach in your writing? Um, I don't know, maybe I'm a little, I'm a little left of center, I guess. Um, and I don't know, I think that that picture it just definitely looks like that lady has been through a lot in her life and it made her a little you know um but i don't know i guess i'm just drawn to people who are a little off i love that we always discuss in our class how musical theater is a form and not an aesthetic and there is no right type of character or right type of music to fit into a musical um it all has to do with the taste and the voice of the artist that's creating it like Ayala and Sarah uh so our next song on the album is a song that is written and composed uh by Hudson um and Hudson could you tell us a little bit more about um this number? Well, so I was inspired by an image of a homeless person. This is a first assignment. Um, and so that image got me thinking about where, where did, how did that person get to the point that he was in? And so I was thinking about someone who basically threw it away and threw away their opportunities, threw away what, what was given to them and instead chose basically a life of partying and wasting time. Um, and so in the story that I, that I was thinking of, he basically, his parents would be pushing him to do everything. He, what, he went to college and his parents die unexpectedly in, in a car accident. And so he's left to fend on his own without his parents and then he ends up in the situation he's in. And in the end, I made this less drastic. He doesn't become homeless, but he's still struggling. He gets, instead of, well, he gets kicked out of college because he, he becomes depressed and he's not, his grades are getting worse and worse. And so he's unemployed, he's looking for work. And this point in the song is where he's finally found his first job after years of unemployment. And he's reminiscing on all the mistakes he made and he's vowing to change them. And he's vowing to do better and make it up to his parents. Thanks, Hudson. And performing the song is our very own Jesse Han. Jesse, can you give a wave? Okay. <laughs> so here we go. Here is Hudson's song. I threw it away. I threw it away. I threw it away. They text me after dark. They're going to a bar and smoking in the park. I felt so elated, but I should have waited Cause I was gonna end up wasted I was procrastinating on a midterm paper 
I knew I could do it later But when I caught wind of the word I thought that I had misheard My parents in an accident And though it seemed absurd My family was dead My heart felt like let me go Everything thrown into disarray, I threw it away. Hey, I think about it every day, cause I threw it away. I threw it away, I threw it away. My parents took on debt, but still I overslept and missed my morning classes. I never sent that essay, my fall grades went astray. Not that they were that great anyway. And I was leaving school for good. I would stay if I could. My degree now erased I realized what I had done And understood all of the waste They didn't want me to say Not cause I couldn't play So I I threw it away hey, I am filled with such dismay I threw it away hey, I should have finished that essay But I threw it away Life went downhill, I didn't have free will All that I wanted was a refill But then my lucky break shook me awake I can't waste this job and make the same mistake I'll be at night school this time I'll pull through Nothing will stop me Cause what I won't do is throw it away hey. I was so insane, I won't throw it away hey, I regret it every day I won't throw it away, won't throw it away, won't throw it away Oh, I love those last final notes that Jesse sings That gives me all the feelings <laughs> Awesome, Hudson Hey, Hudson, I got a question for you I just love the beats in that song. I feel like it's uh, it, like it's so addictive. And what is fascinating to me is that you are a virtu virtuoso pianist and a class classical composer who loves opera. And what we just listened to, it sounds like I don't know, like it sounds like R and B or something. And I'm just wondering. Um, I'm, about how you came to find that musical language when you were working on this song? Well, actually my first, my first revisions of this song, I really did not like. And so when I was assigned to rewrite this song, I was both uh, a bit disappointed that I couldn't do a better song and also excited to make it a little bit less bad. Um, so <laughs> I guess I, I listened to a lot of, it's a very, a Panic at the Disco, I guess, AJR, set it off that sort of genre and that inspired me the way the way they use harmonies that inspired me a lot in writing this song and I know I can't get to that that the same sort of production level but I use a lot of those same harmonies the same ideas well not not like quoting anything but same sort of the same sort of way that they write it and so that gave me a lot of the the way I write the uh, songs that's a lot that's a lot of where the how that comes from I love that you did a, a deep dive into your musical research there. And, and that's something that I like to do as well as a composer is make a, like an iTunes playlist of songs that um, remind me of the world of the show. And often I'll like saturate my ears for a while with that music before I then start writing. So it's cool to see you using that process as well. Um, so uh, I, I love that people are commenting in the chat box and feel free to, um, call out things that you're hearing as you're listening to these songs or reading along with the lyrics. Um, we love hearing from you and we love hearing your uh, feedback because if this were our live concert at Joe's Pub, obviously we would be gauging that by seeing your beautiful faces in the audience and, and hearing you as well. Um, so our next song is a song by Simon Brook, Simon, uh, wave <laughs> um and he is going to um set up this number this is the 
the last of the the group of numbers on our album that were inspired by photographs uh so take it away simon Did we just lose Simon? Yes, we did. That was terrible timing. Internet. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, perhaps say that this song is somewhat self-explanatory. Um, Simon is a genius when it comes through getting all the information that needs to be in a song into a song. Um, and you will see the photo momentarily um that inspired it um so i think all that's left to say is that uh sarah um again performed this number for us oh simon is back simon is back oh hi simon Hello. that couldn't Hello. have been timed any better <laughs> okay oh uh, are we what do you want you us to know about your song i can okay okay um thank you everybody sorry about the uh, inconvenience um so yeah, this song was from the first assignment also, starting from the from an image. And the image I chose was one of, um, it's actually, it was a, another uh, wedding related image of a bride reaching out to a groom. Um, and what interested me about the image was like the physical gesture of reaching and then implicitly like needing to be with someone else. Um, but then with that idea, I ended up setting it, it's not in a wedding setting anymore. It's just exploring the idea of a character song of a person who approaches a personal date with the same excitement and nervousness that anyone would approach a romantic date. Um, and that's what, and the song just kind of went from that idea and, and hope you enjoy it. Here you go. Boyfriend work for fun. All dress up nice with artisanal rice and prepare to spend the night alone. Cause it's been far too long. In fact, it wasn't since 2003 that I set aside my sense of pride and had the chance to talk to me. I'll make me a candle at dinner. Watching the setting sun. If we still aren't talking, then perhaps I'll go walking through the park in the twilight one on one. And if I find a bench by the lake underneath the tree, as the stars all sparkle and it starts to get dark, I'll have the chance to talk to me. for you mm -hmm. um 
this is such a funny song. The the premise of somebody basically taking their own selves out on a date is hilarious. Um, and I'm just wondering, like, like how did you find ways to make it funny as you were writing it? Um, I, I think I always have a hard time gauging whether the songs I'm writing are funny or not. Um, and so what I tried to go with is like take as many and it sounds like love song cliches, but make them first person. Like, and it's sort of like, you know, instead of like, we'll go out for a romantic walk, like I'll go out for a romantic walk or like, you know, that, that like, you know, thanks for lovely night, I'll say to myself, like just those kinds of things to make it first person, I thought was kind of a funny bit. Um, and then, I mean, this song went through a lot of rewrites and each of those rewrites was just trying, if it's possible, just hone in on that idea of, making it as much as possible have have that like joke premise but also i i hope somewhat emotionally resonant for the character singing it um yeah that was the process i took for that okay i feel like one day this song will appear in all audition rooms across new york city <laughs> assuming audition rooms are still a thing <laughs> um that was fantastic um so our next song on the album is a song written by Isabella and uh, Isabella, you're going to tell us a little bit more about the song and what inspired it. Yes. So um, I'm Isabella. I'm 17 and I'm from New Jersey. Um, and as Anna mentioned before, um, I'm a singer songwriter, but I'm also very passionate about writing for musical theater um, and uh, classical composition as well. So today, the song that I'm going to be presenting is called Your Daughter, which was inspired by one of Sarah Lau's uh, inspiration boards. And this song is about a daughter who longs for a relationship with her mother, who is concerned with partying kind of rather than parenting uh, to cope with her struggles with alcoholism and addiction. So that's what it's about. I've been feeling like this more than 18 times Offered your forgiveness Yet I'm sitting out here alone at 918 Thought that you'd come home like you said you would That drink is just for fun like you said one time Now I'm sitting out here with nothing left to say And I know your mind's like the dark roof sea when the storm comes, you still forget about me. Forget about me, forget about me. Sometimes I think about the old days when you held me tight, sending fears away. I remember you were there, but that's some. Get your face when he said goodbye Sometimes I make that face But I can't cry And I know your mind's like the dark rough sea But when the storm comes you still forget about me Forget about me, forget about me
just wanted love I just wanted you It's breathtaking Isabella thank you I I have a question for you about your song too um <laughs> The, do you write as much for yourself as when you're writing for a character or because the production on that and the, the performance is just incredible uh, and I'm just wondering like how what are the similarities and differences between your the theater songs and your own pop songs that you write? Um, well for this song specifically like kind of when I looked at this image, I envisioned it like in a certain key. And that's kind of where I set like the range for it, for mm -hmm. this character. Um, for my own pop songs, again, it kind of just depends on like the, the mood I'm going for, but I tend to write them more in a, in a comfortable place for my voice. But this one just happened to fall in that register. And I thought that it went well with the, the mood of the picture. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Isabella. Um, so the next song in our album uh, is a song that is written by uh, Jesse Michael Hahn and again um, another song inspired by um, the research of Sarah Lau and Jesse can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah uh, so my song is called The Road it's uh, it was based on one of these image boards that we were shown that had a lot of pictures of people who felt very like middle America kind of like opioid crisis was like the general feeling I got from the pictures. Um, and that really like stuck with me and I wanted to try to, I don't know, try to write something that would encapsulate the feeling of someone trying to get out of that, someone trying to move on from that sort of place, that sort of like being in that sort of place, being in that sort of life. Um, yeah. Great. And people are going to hear this um, in the second when I play the track, but something that I think Jesse does so beautifully in all of his songs is that he's able to write to a specific moment, but also tap into the universality of that moment um, so that it resonates emotionally with everybody who hears it. Um, so I will say nothing else. I'm going to play the track now so people can hear it for themselves. Here we go. He doesn't see who he could be besides who he is. He doesn't know where he should go. His course is aimless. He is looking for the road out of town. He is looking for the road, but it can't be found. The road can't be found. family. Dad goes to work, brother's a jerk, and he dreams of when he can leave. If he only found the road out of town. And if he had the keys, he wouldn't hang around. He'd leave this town. He'd leave behind the life he led before. to hit the road and then he's fine for sure get out of this town and find a place where he is more than just another junkie stuck in place stuck in time trying to see who he could be besides who he is 
If he could go, he doesn't know. The map seems endless. If he ever found the road out of town, could he ever even leave? Or would he turn around? Will he leave this town? Or settle down? was stunning Jesse. Tell us a little bit about your decision to just keep it voice and piano which I thought was so effective but I'm, I want to know a little bit about your choice there. Sure um so uh first off I don't think of myself as an arranger so that was definitely a part of it uh but part of it was definitely that I wanted to keep that kind of stripped down feeling because I think that kind of meshed better with the, I don't wanna say feeling again, the feeling of the song, like the, the emotional kind of vibe of the song. It felt like having any kind of like big orchestration would, I don't know, I feel like it would take away from the song would take away from the the what, uh, the effect I'm trying to go for with the song, maybe. Yeah, I think something that like I I was reminded of this year in conversations with a lot of you all was that creation is often as much about not doing something as it is about doing something. Um, we always think about how it's about making, 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 but sometimes it's about using a rest or choosing not to use a specific instrument or choosing not to have a character rhyme. Um, and those decisions can often be what gives it its artfulness. Um, and I just feel like uh, your song is such a terrific example of, of simplicity used so effectively. Um, so our next song, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> our next song uh, is uh, a song by Sarah Stebbins and uh, we are moving into Inside Outland. Oh, that sounded weird, didn't it? Inside Out Land now. Sarah, will you tell us a little bit more about this song? All right, so um, y'all can hear me, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so my song is called Inside Out. Um, it is supposed to be um, an opening number for a theoretical Inside Out musical. And um, it's sung by Joy only. Um, and in my head, originally, I wanted to do an opening number where, you know, like all of the emotions were singing together and like introducing themselves and like each little character got an introduction. But as I started thinking about the theme of the show, I realized that the movie and I guess the musical that would be based off of it is a lot more about Joy's personal relationship with Riley and how she kind of grows and changes along with Riley. So that's kind of what I started working with. Thanks, Sarah. Here's your song. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the inside of Riley's Mind. We're all so happy to have you here tonight. My name is Joy, and I'll be your host for the evening. Yes, that joy, the abstract concept of happiness. I'm in charge of making sure that Riley can feel joy whenever she makes a goal in hockey, gets an A on an exam, or hangs out with her friends at the mall. It isn't an easy job, but it's an important one. Riley's 12 years old now, and she's grown into quite the smart, sophisticated young lady. But you're probably wondering, how did we get to where we are today? Well, it all started one summer's day very long ago. I remember the day that our Riley was born. The very first thing she did was smile. She giggled and gurgled so peaceful, serene, in mom and dad's arms for a while. 
It was nothing short of amazing, just Riley and me. And I knew that together forever, we'd be so happy. And the world would be so bright. From when we opened our eyes in the morning, till mom and dad came to tuck us in at night, we'd be so is all about and lucky for me I get to watch from inside out now it's been 12 whole years I can hardly believe how quickly the time has passed she's been learning a lot and she's making new friends and it all seems to happen so fast and the future seems pretty scary, but she'll be prepared. Cause whatever might come her way, I will be there. We'll be so happy. Cheerfulness will fill her days. And as she gets older and wiser, I'll be with her every step of the way. We'll be so happy. Cause that's what life is all about. Get to see it all from inside out. I'm here to help Riley take on the world and make sweet memories as she goes. To carefully watch over her, making sure that she learns all the things she needs to know. And if I were ever to fail, I don't know what I would do. She is relying on me to care for and guide her. So for forever, I'll be right beside her and make her so happy. And the world is beautiful and bright from the first sign of sun in the morning till the stars and the moon come out at night. We'll be so I got a question for you. Um, I just got a little thrill while I was watching the song. Um, I looked up and saw everybody's heads going like this at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the music so beautifully captures the spirit of the character Joy, who's just like always a little too joyful. Um, and I was wondering when you're working as a composer lyricist, um, or when you were working as a composer lyricist on this specific song, what came first, music or lyric? Did you do one entirely first and then do the other entirely? Or how did your process go? Um, well, it's usually kind of a mixture of both, as I think, like, generally every time that question gets asked, everyone's like, oh, it's kind of both. Um, I think for this song in particular, I actually wrote the, I wrote the bridge first. I remember I wrote the bridge first um, and I think it was lyrics first there um, mm. because the lyrics were originally supposed, yeah, like the, that bridge was originally supposed to be like an A section. Um, and, and like every time I looked at it, I was like, no, that, that makes no sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's always been kind of a mixture but it's kind of cool like what you're bringing up is the fact that when you're writing a song it doesn't always happen chronologically and I think Almost often a lot ever. of people yeah when they're writing like verse chorus songs because the chorus has to be the hooky part with the big idea for the song often people will write the chorus and then they'll go backwards um and write up to the chorus through the verse so it's just a reminder that um songwriting can be circular <laughs> um Great. Uh, so we are up to our last two songs of the album. And um, John is actually going to drop into the chat box 
um, a link to um, where you can um, access the album on SoundCloud. Um, uh, I have been playing it on rotation uh, because I just feel like all of these songs put together makes such a terrific, uh, diverse um, listening experience. Uh, really, you are all so fiercely talented. Um, so uh, our second to last song is written by Danielle Wu. Um, and Danielle, can you tell us a little bit about uh, this song? We're leaving Inside Outland now, right? And we are going to... Oh, yeah, no, we're not. We're not at all. I, I'm glad you all shook your heads. Ignore me. Danielle, speak. <laughs> um, hi. Um, this song is about the part of the movie um, where Joy falls into the memory pit and she's reminiscing about all the happy memories that Riley had. Um, this is an incredibly vulnerable moment for Joy because she feels sadness for the first time, too. Um, a big inspiration for this song was actually my best friend, Sydney, who brings me joy every day. Um, and this song is being sung by the wonderful Megan McCormick. Okay. Don't end up forgetting me as well. 
beautiful, Danielle. Something that I was reminded of when I was listening to that song just then was um, how much your, uh, how much that song in particular reminds me of art song. Um, like it makes me think of Jake Heggie actually. Um, and there are, are many uh, musical theatre composers who really do perfectly straddle the worlds of musical theatre and um, opera or classical music. Like I'm thinking of Dave Malloy, who I know you're a big fan of, and uh, Janine Tesori and Michael John Lacusa, um, Ricky and Gordon, Adam Gettle. Um, so I'm just wondering, um, when you're writing music for a theatre song, do you approach it any differently than when you're writing music for an art song or for a classical piece that you are composing? Um, at first, I think I go in with a different mindset, but at the end, I think um, it just all, like the process is very similar to each other. And why are they similar? I guess like, I use a lot of things that I learned for writing like classical composition in a lot of these songs that I wrote for the class. So, yeah. Right. I know everybody was uh, pushed to the limits as far as notation goes this year, <laughs> um, which is, I don't know, I get a kick out of notation, but I can't say everybody does. Um, well, we are approaching the, uh, the last um, track on our album, but before we do that, I just want to um, acknowledge a few really important people um, without whom uh, the MTS program would not have been possible this year. Um, first and foremost, our incredible assistant director, Megan McCormick. Uh, wave, Megan! <laughs> Also, John and Amanda and Shauna, um, who uh, work um, tirelessly behind the scenes to keep all the programs uh, running um, and, um, and growing. And um, we ha actually have some sponsors um, and I am going to show you who they are because they are really important. Um, oh goodness, now you have to look at my computer. Sorry about that, friends. Um, <laughs> here we go. Uh, so our sponsors this year were ASCAP and um, the NEA, uh, New York City Cultural Affairs and um, New York State Council of the Arts. So those are some pretty fancy sponsors if you ask me. Um, and uh, I also want to mention that every year um, the New York Youth Symphony um, directors um, uh, are able to give out a director's award. The director's award um, is created so that uh, we can recognize a student who has um, really substantially contributed to the program and without whom um, the spirit um, of the program would not have felt the same. Um, and I just want to, before I, I, I give it out virtually, want to shout out um, two um, extraordinary outgoing students, both return students um, of the program who um, have just made my experience teaching this program so incredible, but who also are just such wonderful artists in their own right and um, who I'm sure are going on to make amazing things, whatever it is they choose to make. Um, so that shout out goes out to Jesse Michael Hahn and Sarah Stebbins. Um, we are going to miss you guys as you graduate and move on next year. Um, and the director's award this year, um, uh, we are going to give to Simon Brooke. So congratulations, Simon. Uh, you have um, exemplified what it means to be collaborative, um, to be a mentor, to stretch yourself and push yourself and, um, and strive for the best that you can do. And um, it's been uh, such a joy to have you in the program. Um, so our last song is a song that everybody in our program has been singing it's like an earworm and it also will make you cry. I promise it will make you cry. Um, 
and it is written by Caden and arranged by Simon. Caden, can you tell us a little about this last song that we're going to hear? <laughs> um, so I, I don't really know exactly what to say because I'm not really prepared for this, but um, it's basically story-wise what's happening. If you haven't seen Inside Out, basically um, Riley has been like not having fun in this new school that she's at. And she's like, this is the worst. I want to go back home. So she takes a train or a bus back to Minnesota where she grew up. But then she's like, wait, maybe this isn't a good idea. And this is basically her coming back to her parents and basically just explaining everything that's going on. And that's like what the story is. Uh, this was like a collaboration between me and Simon. Uh, I wrote the music and lyrics and Simon did the beautiful arrangement on it. I'm just, I'm so happy that the arrangement turned out the way it did because I think it's so great. I just think it's the best. And this was also like, when we were recording it, we, had, we have a lot of people involved in this. <laughs> I just want to just, just to give a little preview because this was kind of, you know, a, a reminder that we're going through this like really special moment all together. And like the way that everybody is just trying to like make the best of where we're at right now. So Caden wrote the music and lyrics, Simon did the arrangement and, um, and then uh, Megan and her partner Lincoln laid down the backing vocals and then they sent the track off to Sarah who recorded the lead vocals. And then I think it came back to Simon who then added the instrumentation, but there were some live instruments as well, I think. Right, Megan? Yeah, yeah. Hudson, yeah, you see, Hudson. yeah so Hudson. Oh Hudson yes, I forgot about part. Hudson. Yeah, the way, the way we did it, Hudson recorded an awesome live piano part. Then we sent it over to Sarah, who did um, the amazing lead vocals. Then it was sent back to us. I recorded all of the orchestrations on my MIDI keyboard. Um, Lincoln recorded live guitar and live bass. And then Lincoln and I both um, recorded the backing vocals. So there were, I'm like counting heads on my, on my little Brady Bunch screen right now. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six collaborators on this recording. Isn't that incredible? The fact that it got completed is also incredible. So kudos to you guys. All right, so here is, I'm not gonna say the title or I'll cry. Here is the song, here's the song. Here we go. I'm sorry for leaving For making you worry Sorry for not being The happy old me I've tried to ignore What I'm looking for Where I want to be I miss Minnesota the friends I used to make The lake where you used to skate with me I miss Minnesota Go back. 
<laughs> you know what, everybody, you can unmute yourselves now. What a beautiful note to end this sharing with tonight. Um, I just want to say if there's anybody watching out there that wants to join our cohort next year, um, applications will go live on the New York Youth Symphony website, I think in July, nyys.org. Um, it really is the most fun, um, warm and um, ex exciting thing to be a part of. And, you know, I just, I've gotten so much out of working with all of you this year. It's been such a tremendous honor. Um, and I, I just like want you to clap your, everybody clap. I feel like we need to clap. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and uh, listen to our album. And then how, how do we end something like this? Cry. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know. Thank I you, guess. Anna. Thank, Thank you, oh, it's Anna. My Thank you so Anna. much. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Okay, everybody. <laughs> oh. Oh. This has been great. I'm crying on the internet. <laughs> okay, this has been wonderful. Thank you for joining us in the chat box, everybody. And um, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. <laughs> Stay in touch. Thank you, Megan. Yeah. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, oh, Megan. Stay in touch. Thank, thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Somebody needs Bye. to make a group Bye. chat. Remember to make a group chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, on it. I'm on it. Do it. Do it, Jesse. Do it. <laughs> Okay. Bye. 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 Stay safe. Oof.